sidewalk and sometimes create flash floods. If you're driving around in these conditions, you need to avoid low-lying areas. And if you're driving around at night, you could easily find yourself in some serious trouble. Amanda and Ezekiel live in an apartment in Little Rock, Arkansas. A single, hard-working mom, Amanda cherishes the time she spends with her 12-year-old son. Oh, me and my son got the best relationship. We stay together. We go places together. He don't let me go nowhere by myself. I don't let him go nowhere by himself. We stay together. Amanda and Ezekiel are driving together one night in downtown Little Rock. It's been raining heavily all day, and there have been flash flood warnings. Very important to stay at home. And A local news station is broadcasting live about the flooding that is taking place throughout Little Rock, when in the background, they capture on camera an SUV getting stuck in the water. Inside the car are Amanda Stewart and her son, Ezekiel. Before I know it, it was coming up on the water. And I saw the water, but it didn't look deep. So I said, I'm just gonna go and cut through here. And we can go and go. And then as, as we went down, and my, and my top, my truck started going down. I'm like, oh my God. So I threw it in reverse, and my tire, my back tire started spinning. A passerby named Thomas Hudson sees the SUV stuck in the water. So he backs his truck down with the intent of tying a rope to the SUV and pulling it out. I stepped out of my truck and asked her if she could swim. And she said she couldn't swim. And she was in. Um, at that time, about three feet of water, and I didn't know what the current of the water was like, so I said, well, stay put. I'm just going to come wade out to your truck and, and tie off onto your truck. Thomas goes to his truck to get the rope. It is tangled. While he works quickly to untangle the rope, Amanda's car begins to drift into the deeper water. Then I felt my truck, like, slide and turn it by itself. I was like, oh, my God. That's when the water started coming up to my knees. At this point, a fire engine appears. But at first, the firemen are unaware of the desperate situation going on inside the sinking SUV. We pulled up on the scene um, to block the intersection. And at the time when we first pulled up, we actually didn't think anyone was in there because there's a lot of bystanders out on the shore or on the street. Ezekiel, who is in the back seat, scrambles to the back of the car. I was worried that like, we were going to drown through the, um, you know, the water was coming out really fast, real fast. Amanda tries to join Ezekiel in the back of the car, but she is panicking. And I felt the water in my waist, and I was trying to stash my keys out. And my keys, they got stuck in the niche, and I couldn't get my keys out. Then I was trying to get seatbelt off. I could not get out of my seatbelt. My seatbelt was stuck. I kept beating on it, beating on it, and beating on it. So finally, I just beat on it real hard, and it came loose. And I jumped back, my legs started floating, and I was going back there with my son. I told the firefighters there are people in that car and they can't swim. The firefighters apparently had some gear to stage. I couldn't tell when they would be ready to go out, so I had to make a choice. The uh, roof of the car was already pretty close to the water level. I didn't know how much air they had in the vehicle, so I went ahead and swam out there with one end of the rope. Incredibly, the car is almost completely submerged. The water was up to my neck. I kept telling my son the whole time, keep your face up to the ceiling so you can breathe. Because it was already going, his mouth is talking to me, and of spinning water out, talking to me, spinning water out, and I had my face up to the ceiling. When Thomas reaches the car, he knows that time is running out. They had swam to the back of the vehicle where the most air was to keep their faces above the water, uh, which is where I was, and I tried to kick the window out, and uh, it was underwater. I couldn't get enough momentum on my feet to kick the window out. So I tried to punch the part of the window that was still above the water, and there wasn't enough above the water to punch to really get a good punch in. It was definitely a scary situation. 